A downside of this isolation is that script in one window can't interact with script or code in another window, and none of the objects can interact with others in another window. More precisely, this isolation is an effect for windows that the user opens independently of script. But script code can open other windows, and in that case there's a special parent-child relationship between the windows that let them interact. An iframe embedded in a page is also a child of the window that contains it and is also an independent browsing context within its own window object. JavaScript in the browser doesn't make a meaningful distinction between tabs, iframes, and other browser instances. They're all just browsing contexts and they're all just window objects. An important thing to note here is that frames are no longer a part of the HTML5 specification, and frankly, good riddance. Iframes remain part of the specification and remain useful within the body section of a page. But frames are another type of window that you can manipulate with JavaScript with full access to a document object for each frame. But because frames are becoming an obsolete feature, this course doesn't cover them. Our recommendation is that you not create new pages using frames and eliminate them from old pages when you have the opportunity to rebuild the pages. Another situation in which one window can interact with another is if the documents in the two windows were loaded from the same domain. So what we're going to do now is explore how to create new windows and take advantage of that special parent-child relationship and the interaction between the objects in each window. When the browser displays a page for the user, it always opens the main browser within a tab, if you have that feature enabled. But you can use script within a page's document to open any number of child windows. And to do that, you use the open method of the window object to spawn a new window. And here's the syntax for that. The open method takes up to four parameters, all of which are optional. And these define the window properties and the effect on history. So the URL is a string value, and that represents the document that's going to be loaded. If you omit the value, the window opens a blank page using the special about colon blank URL. And then the second parameter is a string name for target references in HTML tags. If a window with that name already exists and the script is able to interact with that window, it has permissions to, the existing window is used. Otherwise, a new window is created and assigned the name that you specify. And then the third parameter is a set of specs, which is a string containing name value pairs that you can use to specify the physical appearance and characteristics of the window. And then finally, the fourth parameter is replace. This is a Boolean value that specifies whether the URL creates a new history entry or replaces the entry for the current window. This is a lot like the assign versus replace methods for navigation. All right, and so here's an example that illustrates the usage of window.open. So this is going to spawn a new browser window and go to a document that resides at www.appdev.com. Now, this statement omits the third parameter, which defines the dimensions in Chrome of the new window, the appearance of the new window. When you omit this parameter, the new child window is going to retain the look and feel of the parent window that spawned it. If you do specify a value for the third parameter, then the attributes that you define explicitly apply only to the child window. Here's a table that lists the attributes for that third parameter, as well as their expected value types and the default value. So you can use channel mode. It's a Boolean, so it takes yes, no, one, or zero. Default is no. And then this enables theater mode, a special mode of displaying a window. Directories indicates whether you want to include directory buttons. Full screen indicates whether you want to include the title bar 
or menus. And you also have to be in theater mode for full screen to have effect. You can also specify the height of the window. Minimum is 100 pixels. You can also specify the left location, which locates it on the screen. A little bit lower in the list, you can see top. So between the two, you can specify the precise location on the user's desktop where the window appears. And then location, whether or not you want to display the address bar, menu bar, whether you want to display the menu bar at the top of the window, if the window is resizable or not, if it's going to include scroll bars, if the document that you load in the window is larger than the available space, whether or not you want to include the status bar, or the title bar, or the toolbar. Now you can also specify the width. So between the height and the width, top and left, you can specify the size and exact location of that window. Now for security reasons, there are restrictions on the attribute values that you can specify in that third argument. For example, in most browsers, you can't position the new window out of view off the screen. Another common restriction is that because of abuse from using the open method to annoy users with pop-up ads, most browsers have restrictions on what code can execute the method. So in an early version of the childcontent.html sample page that I'm going to be showing you a little bit later, I created the new window in the onload event handler property in the body element. But when you load the page, it invoked Chrome's pop-up blocker because the call to open was not in response to a user action. Well, despite the fact that opening the page could be construed as a user action. But be that as it may. So that's why the current version of the sample page invokes the open method when the user clicks a button on the parent page. The window.open method, in addition to creating a new window object and setting its initial properties, returns a reference to that window object and assigns it to the variable. By saving that return value, you can use it as a reference to access the methods and properties of the new child window and create content for it. This is the crucial link that lets the parent window access the child window. On the other hand, if no other statements within your code need to reference the new window, you just open up the window for the user's use, then you don't need to assign the return value to a variable. All right, and if you want to close your newly created window via a script contained in either the parent window or the child window, you can simply call the close method of the window variable like that. Now, for the most part, it's good practice to reference the specific window you want to close in your script. If you were to call window.close or self.close or just close from script instead of new window or whatever variable you save the reference to the window in, then you would close the main window itself, depending on where the code is executed. So just be careful of that little, little uh, gotcha. Now, many times you want to load the new child window with content. And most commonly, you'll probably do that with content that resides in an existing HTML file. And you can define that using the first parameter in your call to the open method. So that's fine for pages with static content, but sometimes you'll also want to use dynamic methods in order to add content to the new window. In that case, you can use the document.write method in statements in a script that's referenced by the child window to create the dynamic content. There are a few things you need to understand about using this technique. After a page loads, the browser's output stream closes automatically. When the output stream closes, any content in the stream displays in the browser. The browser renders that content. Any further calls to document.write once the stream is closed will open a new stream and erase the current page. So once you open a new stream, you should be sure to always close it through a call to the document.close method or your content may not display correctly. The reason is that any call to document.open on an already open stream will append the new content to the old. Any HTML tags that are intended to overwrite those of the old document will not take effect, 
and any body text in the new document will likely be appended to the old. Okay, so just keep that in the back of your mind as a gotcha if you're working intensively with these output streams. The sample page, childcontent.html, contains four buttons that exercise some of the features of creating child windows. The first two open and close a child window that navigates to the W3C homepage, and the other two create child windows and dynamically add content. All right, so when I click on the first button here, it opens up a new window, in this case in my tabbed interface, it opens up a new tab within Chrome and navigates to w3.org. If I go back over to my page here, because this window opened that other window, I can close that tab by clicking on that button, and now that tab has gone away. The third button, Hello World, opens up a child window here and dynamically adds some content, and also changes the background color to blue. Close that, and then the fourth button opens up another child window and also adds some dynamic content. All right, so that's the sample page. Let's take a look at the code behind it. First of all, let's look at the HTML that defines the buttons. So there I have four buttons, open W3C, close W3C, and so forth. And as you can see, I've defined all of the click event handlers as functions. And the page has a single script element. When the page loads, the only script that executes, other than the script that creates the functions, is to create this new window variable. This is going to hold a reference to the new child window. Then all the rest of the code is defined in functions. Oh, one thing to point out here too is that actually three of the buttons define functions, but this second button right here, I just put the code to close the window directly within the button itself. And so that closes that new W3C window. That's all you need to do to close it. Okay, so here's the code. There's the code right there. That opens a new tab for the W3C homepage. Pretty simple stuff. Just calls window open with the URL for the page that I want to open within the window. Now, because the code passes only the URL argument to the open method, all the other ones, well, all of them are, are optional. But in this case, the new window takes on the same general appearance as the parent window, the window that I'm executing the script code within. And so in most browsers, most browsers that have a tabbed interface, that's why you end up with a new tab. Because my existing window was open in a tab, opens up a new tab with the same window characteristics. Okay, and so I showed you the code for closing the window as well. Now, it's important to keep in mind that one window can only close another window that the parent created. You can just imagine the havoc if the code in a rogue window could close any window that the user has open, so browsers don't allow that. Okay, then the other two buttons on the page open a small window and receive dynamic content. So the open method calls are a little bit different. So here's the spawn window function. This encapsulates the code that opens the window because I use it in both write hello and write goodbye. So in this case, it's going to open a new window with no content. So it's initially going to have that blank page that browsers will display. This specifies the name of the window I'm also going to save that reference to the new window variable. And then the third argument, I'm specifying that the height is going to be 200 pixels and the width 300 pixels. So now this window has different characteristics than the parent window. So in most browsers, this is going to open up as another browser instance, as you saw when I, I clicked on those buttons. There was a new smaller window that opened instead of a tabbed window. Okay, so that's the open method. So here's the write hello. That's that first window that I opened. This starts to check to see whether the new window is null, the new window variable is null, or if it's closed. 
If either of these expressions is true, then it's going to execute the spawn window because the window isn't currently open or doesn't exist yet. So it's going to execute spawn window and we'll end up with that new window with a reference saved to new window. All right, so at this point, now the code knows that new window, that variable, holds a valid reference to a window object. And so it sets the focus to that new window. Then it builds a page content string. So as you can see, it's some very simple HTML. HTML open and closing elements. I have a little typo there, but fortunately the browser figures it out. Open and closing head. There's the closing head. We have a title within the head section. And then we have a body that sets the background color to blue and the text to black, and then includes some hello world text within an H1 element. And then it uses the document.write method of that new window window in order to write out that page content. So here's where you get access to that child window. So you're actually executing a write method on the document object that's contained within that new window. And you just pass in the text that you want to include in the stream. And then you want to close the document stream as I discussed. All right, so at that point, the window is open, it has the content, and it displays to the user. Now, an important thing to point out here is that when you close a window, it continues to exist in memory and will have its closed property set to true. So in this first line of code here, we had to check whether the new window variable is null, meaning that no window had yet been created, or if it's closed, meaning that it had at some point been created, but was closed. A closed window is going to have null document, and usually its methods won't do anything. This means that if you repeatedly open and close windows using the sample page, you'll actually only be working with a single window object in memory, as long as it has the same name. All right, then the code for write goodbye is basically just a variation. The only thing that's really different is the content. So I have a couple different windows. You can open and close them at will. 